Hopefully you now feel comfortable, at least a little bit, with conic sections. My goal with this little video is to give you a summary of it all. Because you have these like four different conic sections, and then you got to kind of put them all together and spot when you have one and not the other, and recognize the different ones, and how to graph each of them, and the properties of each. So I'm going to kind of summarize all of them on one page. I already wrote down a whole bunch of stuff under here because it'll make it kind of easier for me to describe it. Because I'm going to say a lot of stuff here, but there's a lot of stuff going on with all these conics, and it's really important to get all the big picture put together in your head. So trek with me through this. Hopefully I make some sense. If you need to pause it for a second and think about what I'm saying, let's do it. Here we go. The summary. First of all, you have this HK. HK is the center or the vertex. For instance, here's the center, it's the green dots. This one is the vertex because there's no center of a parabola. So let's talk about each one of these shapes. Again, that's parabola, circle, ellipse, and hyperbola. The four conic sections, all one happy family. All right. If you look, that's the vertex. One, negative two. Your A value is negative one because of how kind of wide or narrow that is. I'm not going to go into that one in particular for this situation. There's the equation that gives you the parabola. Now, since it's on a side, it's x equals. If it was, say, a vertical like that, it would be y equals. And the H and K would be flip-flop. That'd be an x. Anyways, it would be a little bit different, but I'm not going to put every single example on this video. Anyway, since it's on the side, it's x equals. Um, and if you look at the formula, you have h and k. And so if you see here, you have a y. And isn't k the y value? So you see it's opposite. It's the opposite of x, opposite of k. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. The h is 1. And this is going in the negative direction. So that's going negative. This would be positive direction. So it's negative 1 a value. Now, the parabola is probably the hardest to graph for people, especially a sideways parabola. Now, a vertical and horizontal vertical parabolas up or down tend to be a little bit easier because you would have gone over those most likely with the uh, quadratics. But since it's on a side, it's um, a different situation. And so it really gets people is the HK is kind of backwards on them. Because if that's X, this is Y. So again, the Y value of HK is with the Y. And there's always a squared here. Anyways. So, parabolas, a little bit more difficult. Again, if it's vertical, it would have been y equals. Um, okay, parabolas, circle. The center is 2, 4. Bam. Hopefully you can count the radius. See the radius? You go over right there, 5. If you go up 5, down 5, any way you go, it's 5. So the formula for it is x minus h, y minus k, both squared, and the radius squared. So I all have my information, so it's x, the opposite of 2 is negative 2, squared. Opposite of 4 is negative 4, y, squared, equals radius squared, 25. Alright, circles are probably one of the easier ones to do, because you just take the center, square them, x and y, and then square the radius. I like circles, hopefully you do too. Alright, next one is ellipse, which I kind of call like an oval or like a smushed circle. <laughs> Anyways, the formula for a, an ellipse always equals 1. Same with hyperbola. Actually, look at these two equations. They're very, very similar. The big difference is a plus and a minus. Yes, the y is first here, but there's a reason for that one. Sometimes the x is first. Okay, but they're both equal to 1. Now, for an ellipse, again, it looks a lot like a circle. See the circle here? See how the top looks a lot like a circle, except there's a 1 instead of a radius? And then there's two denominators on an ellipse. And I kind of say these denominators are kind of like the radius split up in two pieces. Because if you look at this ellipse, you kind of see I have a radius this way and a radius this way. They're not really radii, but you kind of think of it that way. So I have a radius that way and that way. And each of these are basically its own radius. Anywho, let's talk about this. 3, negative 2, bam, hk. My a value, they call it the a, is this radius. Hopefully you can count over 6. 3, I went up 3, this radius is 3, so it's B. Basically, A is always the longer side, B is the shorter side. So sometimes A is over here and B is over here, depending on if X or Y, if the X or the Y, X is this way, Y this way, 
depending on which one is longer, it depends on where you would say A is. So again, A is the longer. And again, in this situation, it's the, under the X, because the X is the longest direction. So again, with this formula, I plugged in the opposite of 3, the opposite of negative 2. Now, where do I get 36 and 9? Where well, I square A, and I square 3, and always equals 1. Now, again, think about it. These two values, again, are the radii. Two separate radii, because you can think of this kind of a smushed or squished or stretched circle. Where a circle has one radius, every direction is the same. All right. So again, it looks a little very similar. Now, a hyperbola is just a minus here. So it's very, very similar. You have your center right there. Negative 2, 2. 4 is the radius, the larger. B is the other one, the smaller. Actually, it isn't always the larger and smaller. A is actually the positive. It's kind of weird. It's just, it's the first is always A. Because think about this. It is larger because if you think about this negative, this technically is kind of like a negative. I might have confused you there. This this basically, the first one on hyperbola is always your A. Just, and your B is always the second because the B is always smaller because it's kind of negative. Anyways, um, the four is how far up here you went, and the two is how far over. You make this little box, and the reason for this little box is you're making these things called asymptotes. And what you do is you start here at the center, and you go kind of through the corners of the box, and that creates an asymptote. And from this, you go through the corners of the box, and then you create your hyperbolas right there. But by the way, the x is not part of the graph. It's just boundaries that help you graph. So you kind of just go, whoop, you go, wham. Just little boundaries, the asymptotes help you graph it really quick nice way of graphing and again the a and the b give you this box kind of the parameters of your box um okay so if you look at this y y is though the y value first and why is the x here what do you see how this hyperbola is opening up and down y is first if my hyperbola is over here and over here guess what x would be first that's very important on a hyperbola, the first letter, the X or the Y, tells you which way you're opening. All right. Over here, see the X and the Y? One connection over here. The X, see how the 36 is under the X because you went 6 in the X direction? See how the 9 is under the Y because you went 3 in the Y direction? See here, Y, 4 squared 16. See, I went 4 in the Y direction, up 4 in the Y over 2 in the x. See, I have 2 squared in the x direction. So wherever your a and b, whichever direction your a and b are going, is what letter is below. So if a squared, 4 squared is 16, it's under the y because you went up 4. You went over 2, 2 squared is 4. So again, they both have squares, there's a minus and a 1. And again, the first letter is the direction in which your hyperbola is opening. These always usually x is first because with a plus it doesn't matter the order, but we tend to put x is first. The a value is the largest denominator. Here the a value is the first. Okay. And again, you square the a and the b to get the bottom parts. And again, here you have a circle. Here we hk. This is your radius squared. And again, parabolas, once again, same idea. You have hk. This is k. This is h. You have an a value, which is kind of the width of your uh, parabola. The negative or positive tells you which direction. And this is pretty obvious. There's only one squared on a parabola, where the rest of you have two sets of squared pieces. So hopefully you can see some connections. They all have like hk's. These all have a's and b's. This has one radius. Okay, this a and b makes a box to help you graph. These a and b just gives you the radiuses, which you then can make the dots, because you, you make boom, 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 boom. Mix the dots. How to graph one of these is I just go five, 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 and go all the way around. Um, all right, so that's kind of a summary of quadratic sections, conic sections, not quadratic. Silly me. Um, so good luck with them. Hopefully this summary kind of helps you out. Now I'd like to do next is a application of conic sections. So take a look at this. Why are conic sections useful? Here we go. The three conic sections I'm going to talk about, I'm going to skip circles, 
have very interesting reflective properties. It could be like mirrorish reflection or even lenses like glasses, the refraction of light. So what happens is all these conic sections have focal points, which is a whole different concept I didn't put in the previous um, lecture video part. So these are focal points, these red dots. And what's really cool about focal points is if light, say this is a lens, so your eyeball or like glasses, if light comes directly towards that, it's reflected, refracted to the focal point. No matter what light comes directly at it, it's refracted to the focal point. So that's kind of like how like a, a lens, like um, magnifying glasses can like make really hot, like you can burn paper, somebody say to burn an ant or something like that. Anyways, all the light that comes and hits this refracts into here. No matter if it comes straight in, it gets refracted in. Now, if this is a mirror, which you see solar cells sometimes making these, and, and you've seen them maybe on TV or, anyways, if you put a, a sensor here that heats something up, all the light that comes in and gets reflected reflects to that focal point. So anything that comes from the inside, if this is a mirror, gets reflected to there. So all this is harnessed to one point, where here it comes in and gets refracted into one focal point. Really cool property. Um, here, what's interesting about the two focal points is if you were to say make a pool table where you had an elliptical pool table, if you simply hit your pool ball against any wall from this focal point, it'll bounce off and go into that hole. If you had a hole right there, it'd be like the dummy proof pool table, as long as you didn't put English on it. So if I hit right here, anywhere hit against the wall, boom, it'll go in the hole. It's really cool. Another thing is what if you made an oval office, like the president's room, <laughs> the oval office. And in the oval office, you have a chair sitting here and a chair sitting here. Everything you say will reflect off the walls and bounce to that person. So you can basically have two people having a conversation in an oval room at these two points. They could have a conversation while everybody else around them is talking. Because everything you say, all the words, all the noises that come from your mouth, bam, bounce, and bounce over to that spot, back and forth. Kind of cool. Last thing, the hyperbola, really cool about hyperbola, is if, for instance, ignoring, let's say ignore this one right here. If, if I have this situation, all right, actually, no, let's not ignore this one. Let's say this one, I here's the mirror, a mirror, and I'm aiming at this. So if I aim at this, when it hits this, it will go to that. So if I'm here and I aim at that, it will go and reflect that focal point. Now, if I, for instance, do this one, let's say I, I look at this one right here. If I focus on this point, I bounce off this and it'll go to that one, as long as this is not here blocking it. But if I aim at this focal point, it'll bounce to that focal point. So if I say I was right here and I aimed at that, it will boom, bounce to that focal point. So it also has some reflective properties. Internal reflective, depending on if you aim over here, or external, if you come and bounce off this to that one. They all have really interesting focal points, dealing with mirrors, dealing with lenses, and all dealing with the focal points, which is another thing that's learned within conic sections because each of these three have very specific, unique focal points that are very useful. Hopefully that was kind of interesting.